Sutra. Another time, limitless as Samkhya ends ago, a Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes thus come one appeared in the world. His lifespan was forty eons. In his Dharma image age, and a heart who had accumulated blessings from rescuing beings met a woman named Bright Eyes, who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? asked the Ahat. Bright Eyes replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now. Sympathizing with her, the Ahat entered Samadhi to contemplate and saw that Bright Eyes' mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The Ahat asked, Bright eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create while alive that makes her now have to undergo such a terrible suffering in a bad destiny? Bright eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and other sea creatures. He expe she especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Oh, Venerable One, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. The Ahat took pity on the Bright Eyes and used his skillful means. He urged Bright Eyes thus. With sincere resolve, be mindful of pure Lotus Eyes, first come one, and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. Commentary Another time, limitless Asamkhya ends ago, a Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes First Kamwan appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 ends. In his Dharma image age, the Dharma image age after this Dharma, after this Buddha entered Nirvana, on a heart who certified to the fruition and who had accumulated blessings to rescue beings met a woman named Bright Eyes who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? What do you wish to in return for your offering to me? What advantages are you hoping for? asked the heart. Bright Eyes replied, on the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now, in which realm did my mother become reborn. Sympathizing with her, the Ahat meditated, entered Samadhi to contemplate and saw that bright eyes mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The Ahat saw these days and asked, Bright eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create while alive that makes her now have to undergo such terrible suffering in a bad destiny? In the house, Bright eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and other sea creatures. She did not eat only fish and turtles. What else did she eat? She especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. She ate with an abandoned indulgence. She forgets everything else, including her life, when she has food like this in front of her. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Were we to count the number of lives she took, there would be as many as billions upon billions. Oh, Venerable One, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. Please think of a way to save my mother. The Ahat took pity on Bright Eyes and used his skillful means. He urged Bright Eyes thus, With sincere resolve, be mindful of pure Lotus Eyes, thus come one, and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. This way, you and your mother both acquire benefits, whether those alive or passed away experiences advantages. Sutra, Bright Eyes heard that, 
quickly renounced everything she loved and swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha. Then she made offerings before them. The, the reverence she felt moved her to tears, and he wept. She wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body, dazzling gold in color and as large as the Mount Sumeru, emitting red light. He said to bright eyes, Your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Shortly thereafter, a maid servant in the house bore a son who spoke before he was three days old. Lowering his head and weeping, he said to bright eyes, The comic conditions we create during our lives and deaths result in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. I am your mother and have been in darkness for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Thirty years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? Commentary Bright eyes heard that I had teacher to pay respects and make offerings to pure lotus eyes of first come one. So she quickly renounced, estranged, or sold everything she loved away. The Brahman woman sold her house, as mentioned earlier. This woman, bright eyes, sold everything she cherished, the most precious, valuables, and impossible to give up things were given away or sold. And she swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha on paper, silk, and other fabric. Then she made offerings of, of sin and incense, flowers, lamps, candles, and fruits, and different kinds of food, clothing, and bedding before them. The most sincere reverence she felt moved her to tears, and he, she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Since she knew that her mother fell into one of the evil realms and is enduring the suffering of that evil realm, she sobbed out of sadness. She took a look at a Buddha image then bowed. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body. It felt like a dream, though it was not a dream. Since she was extremely sincere, she experienced a state where response and the way intertwined. She saw a Buddha in her room. If the sutra were just to say that she saw a vision, it may seem too strange. So the sutra says that she saw a Buddha in a dream. The Buddha, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, emitting great light, he said to bright eyes, Your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Just you wait. Shortly thereafter, a maiden servant in the house bore a son who spoke, who spoke before he was three years old. Maid servants are usually of a lower class and has to do what their employers order. So soon their maid gave birth to a son. Usually children start take, talking at the age of three or four, but this child was not yet three days old and can uh, could speak. What did he say? Lowering his head as if bowing to the Buddha image and weeping, he said to bright eyes, the karmic conditions we create during our lives and deaths result in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. We must face positive and negative consequences ourselves. I am your mother and have been in darkness devoid of light from the sun, the moon, or the stars for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. 
upon receiving the power of your blessings, for which I am very grateful. I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Although reincarnated as a human being, I am of a lower class that is not so critical as I will die in early death. Thirty years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? Hurry up and think of a way to liberate me from the suffering of the evil realms. Sutra, when Bright Eyes heard those words, she knew without a doubt that they were her mother's. Choked with thoughts, she said to the servants, tried, Since you were my mother, you should know our own, your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil, evil paths? The maiden servant's son answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma, killing and slandering. Had I not received the blessings you earned to rescue me from difficulty, I would not be released from that karma. Bright eyes asked, What happens in the house when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? The maidservant's son answered, I can't bear to speak of the ways in which being suffer for their offenses. Even if I was to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about. When Bright Eyes heard that, she wept bitterly and spoke into the air, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. At the end of these thirteen years, she will be done with her heavy offenses and will not go back to the evil paths. O oh, Buddhas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths, is never again born into low stations, and will never again be female, then here, before the image of pure lotus eyes, thus come one. I vow that from this day on, throughout the millions and billions of ends, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing uh, suffering for their offenses in the house of the three evil paths of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies of the house, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddhas will I myself achieve proper enlightenment. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come one say to her, Bright eyes, your own great compassion and sympathy will reach your mother through is this mighty vow that you are making. My contemplation shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be done with this retribution and will be born in a Brahman with a lifespan of 100 years. After that retribution, she will be born in the land of no concern with a lifespan of uncountable ends. Later, she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and save people and God as numerous as sand grains in the Ganges. Shakyamuni Buddha told uh, Samadhi Self Master Riking, the Ahad whose blessings helped bright eyes then is now inexhaustible in tension Bodhisattva. The mother of bright eyes is now liberation Bodhisattva. Bright Eyes herself is now Earth Star Bodhisattva. Commentary When Bright Eyes heard those words from her maid's newborn son, she knew without a doubt that they were her mother's. She knew without a doubt that the child was her formerly her mother, choked with sobs. She could hardly speak or cry out loud. She cannot seem to laugh or cry even if she wants to. She is all choked up because she is extremely sad. Then she said to the servant's tried, 
since you were my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil paths? The maiden, the maid servant's son answered, "I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma: killing and slandering." She killed a lot of fish eggs because she liked boiled or fried fish and turtle eggs. This type of karma from killing is tremendous. She slandered the tributary and spoke harshly to many beings. Two types of, of serious offenses led her to face this type of retribution. Had I not received the blessings you earned from rescuing me from difficulty, I would not be released. From that karma, based on the karma I created, I should not have been released from my suffering yet. Bright eyes asked, "What happens in the hells when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? Can you tell me?" The maid servant's son answered, "Bright eyes, I can't bear and find it impossible to speak of the ways." In which beings suffer for their offenses. You see, some people are sitting here listening to the sutras and consider it painful. What do you think they would do were they fall into the hells in the face of misery? You say, I do not want to be three to be there to bear punishment. That is impossible to escape without atoning. Our offenses. It would be impossible to wish out of suffering in the house. So, while undergoing some pain in the human realm, think, oh, this is much better than the misery in the house. Suffering in the house is much more severe. If you can think that way, then you will be happy wherever you are. There would be no insufferable places. You will not. Find pains in the legs painful. For example, you see in the house, ghost stick you with a fork and drop you in a pot of oil. Is that miserable? If you say, "Gee, I cannot stand it," please do not put me in that pot of oil. They will not listen to you. There is no favor to speak of. Is that miserable? In fact, they fry you over and over again so that you suffer more. Even if I were to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about or to finish talk about such pain at once. When Bright Eyes heard that, he she wept bitterly. See how in the past the Earth Stopudi said that could do nothing but cry. Others do not even have such capabilities. She sobbed and wailed loudly. Oh, what do I do? And spoke into the air. Since there was nothing she could do, she could only speak into the air, saying, "I vow that my mother will be re- released from the house forever." Fortunately, Bright Eyes' mother had such a filial daughter, without whom the mother could not have come out of the house so easily, because she had taken many lives and yelled at many people. These are the reasons why she suffered in the house. Fortunately, the mother had this female daughter who made a vow that her mother may forever be released from the suffering in the house. At the end of these thirteen years, when her life ended, she will be born with her heavy offenses and will not go back through the evil paths. O、oh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the ten directions. With your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. Be my witness. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths of the hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals, where they experience the pain of knives, blood, and fire, if she is never again born into low stations such as that of a servant's family, and will never again be female, then here before the image of pure lotus eyes does come one. I vow that from this day on, throughout millions and billions of ants, I will respond to all beings. 
who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the hells of all the three evil paths, the hells, the realm of hungry ghosts, and the realm of animals of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies and the suffering of the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. You should know, if Earth's stubbornly Sattva had not made such great vows, we would probably be suffering in the hells, in the realm of hungry ghosts, or in the realm of animals too. The reason that we can be humans now all comes from this vow that Earth stopped his advice made infinite eons ago. We are consequently rescued from the hells, from the realm of hungry ghosts, or from the realm of animals. Since we do not have the penetration of past lives or the penetration of the heavenly eye, we do not realize how much benefit and compassion we received from Earth's nobody said by before. None of us knows the benefit and kindness he gave us. If Earth's nobody said by had not made such a great vow a long time ago, we would be in extreme danger. This is why we must be grateful to Earth's nobody said by and maintain the resolve to repay his kindness. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddha's will, I myself achieve proper enlightenment. I will become a Buddha only once these people become Buddhas. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come on say to her. She did not just hear in a way that was casual, vague, or confusing as if in a dream. She clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come one tell bright eyes. Bright eyes, your own great compassion and sympathy for making this kind of vow delights me. He praises bright eyes. You are able to make a vow that will reach your mother through this mighty vow that you are making. Who taught you? Who told you? so that you can make this great filial vow to your mother. I have never heard any being who can make such a great vow at saving all beings in order to rescue her mother. This is truly rare. This is the best. You are the finest girl. My contemplation using my Buddha eye shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be done with this retribution and will be born as a Brahman. Since you made such a huge vow, your mother in the next life will become a Brahman woman after 13 years of his life. The Brahmans are the pure clan of generations of individuals who cultivate purity. With a lifespan of 100 years as a Brahman, she will be different then. After that retribution, she will be born in the land of no concern, the land of ultimate bliss with a lifespan of uncountable elements. Later, she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and save people and gods as numerous as grand sand grains in the Ganges. Shakyamuni Buddha told Samadhi's self-mastery king, the heart whose blessings are helped Bright eyes then to see where her mother fell is now inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva. He was on the heart of the charm, pure lotus eyes, was a thirst come one, and now he is inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva. Do you know who bright eyes mother is? The mother of bright eyes is now liberation, Bodhisattva. Bright eyes herself is now earth star, Bodhisattva. Sutra, he has been standing in his compassion and sympathy like that from distant ends onward by making vows as many as Genji sends to rescue vast numbers of, number, of numbers of beings. Men and women in the future may, fall, may fail to do good deeds and all do evil, may not believe in cause and effect, may indulge in sexual misconduct and false speech may use divisive and harsh speech and may slander the great vehicle beings with karma like that should suddenly fall into bad destinies. 
commentary. He has been extending his compassion and sympathy like that from distant ends onward by making vows as many as Genji sends to rescue vast numbers of beings. During an end long, long ago, his earth star bodhisattva was extremely compassionate and sympathetic toward living beings as described above. So he made as many vows as the number of sand grains in the Ganges River. The number of vows is not so as small as described in the sutras. It is equivalent to infinity. He universally teaches and transforms all beings, liberating all beings. Men and women in the future may fail to do good deeds and only do evil. People should do no evil and devote to doing every kind of good. These people, however, do not do any act of goodness, but do every kind of evil. They may not believe in cause and effect. Yesterday, we went to lecture at the University of California. After the lecture, one Chinese student asked me outside, Does Buddhism believe in cause and effect? I said, Yes. Not only should we believe in cause and effect, but know that it is absolutely accurate. There is cause and effect whether you believe in this law or not. Let me show you an on-the-spot experiment. experiment. If you do not believe in the law of cause and effect, how do we conduct this experiment? You'll fight someone and slap him. This person will certainly slap you back. Your slapping him in is the cause. His slapping you in return is the result. You hit someone else and someone else hits you. Do you believe in this principle? He was left speechless. Initially, he had a lot of theories with which he planned to argue that there is no cause and effect. But after what I said, he was either afraid that someone will hit you, will hit him, or that he did not want to hit anyone. So he became a believer in cause and effect. I said hitting people is a cause. You are not supposed to hit people, but you did thus creating a cause. Consequently, people turn around to hit you, creating a result. Cause and effect refers to other people being mean to you because you are mean to others. Were you good to others, they would be good to you too. This is the law of cause and effect. So causes of goodness and you will reap fruits of goodness. So causes of evil and you will reap, you will reap fruits of evil. For instance, befriend bad people and they will return you into a bad they will turn you into a bad person. Befriend good people and you will become good even if you started out being bad. Everything is about cause and effect. Do not go searching for the answer outside. Quit saying that other people are mean to me. First ask ourselves whether we are good to others. Reflect on everything and search for the answers within. Stop acting like a camera that photographs others all the time but has no idea what itself looks like. They may indulge in sexual misconduct and false speech all the time. They may use divisive and harsh speech. We must remember not to speak divisively or harshly. What is divisive speech? We reserve one kind of expression for some people and another kind of expression for some other people. For example, we criticize B in front of A and criticize A in front of B. We make mistakes in speaking divisively and harshly. Or we create schisms among an originally harmonious group. A group disperses because of our distractions. Among the different transgressions in speaking divisively and harshly, the most critical is not to break up the harmony of the Sangha. What does that mean? As a lay person, you should not speak of the forms of novices and bishops because they have received at the least the novice precepts or the Buddha or the Bodhisattva precepts. You learn the Buddha drama from bishops and novices. You cannot study the Buddha drama then break the Buddha drama. 
Do not create disharmony in the sound hub. If you do, then you speak divisively and harshly to break up a harmonious sangha. Ruining the sangha's harmony is one of the five rebellious offenses, the most serious offenses. The five are um, killing one's father, killing one's mother, killing on a heart who has a defy to the fusion, and destroy the sangha's harmony, such as telling one monastic about another monastic's mistakes, faults, and wrongdoings, and then tell the, the second one about how the first one is mean, wrong to you, and is jealous and obstructive. As a result, monastics do not get along. They do not live together, they live apart. This would be wrecking a Sangha's harmony. Shedding the Buddha's blood by burning Buddha images or damaging Buddha images. Although the Buddha is not in the world now, ruining Buddha images is also considered shedding the Buddha's blood. The above are all included in the areas of divisive speech and harsh speech. We must be particularly attentive in avoiding these problems. Making such transgressions, we fall into the house and will never come out. And they may slander the great Rehigo, claiming that there is no great Rehigo text, only Pali text. Some such crazy man came yesterday and asked, Is your sutra translated from Pali? He did not even know what Pali looks like, and he asked whether the text came from a Pali text. He pretends to be an expert who knows. This kind of person is most pathetic. Beings with karma like that should certainly fall into bad destinies. They will definitely fall into the three evil destinies where things are dangerous.